So I'm trying to compose something very, very not just a cube, a bit more complex exercise. And let's just say that, you know, just for good measure, I want to have, say, a, a void going in. So we're going to apply these rules in determining how to plot the shadow cast for this. Of course, we need to identify where the vertical lines are in blue. This particular part here is cantilevered, so it's off the ground. So therefore, we need to imagine this as a full volume. And then this vertical line or edge is, how do you determine this? Where does this uh, stop on to the ground level? But on the ground, of course, there are hidden lines of this structure going that way. Behind this volume, the topmost is somewhere there. So you end up with a lot of lines here. It's kind of confusing, but you have to keep track of these things. Now we can determine first the the shadow direction line. So we could it's easy, relatively easy. So we, we just draw out first, of course, the line, which is parallel to the horizon from the ground. We can actually determine what sort of angle that you want the sun is coming from or distant lighting is coming from. So let's determine that to be like something like uh, uh, 60 degrees. Like this edge here, it stops here on the topmost of this opening. I'm going to replicate that same angle over to here. Just make sure that they're parallel. You can use a pen like so and try to determine the same angle. Now here it's different because the plane now is not off the ground. It's on this plane of this object itself. And plot this same angle here. All these light direction lines are parallel to each other. Later, we'll, we'll come back to this because um, if we imagine this, okay, so this is our vertical line and the shadow line is going to go into the building. So I need another shadow line on, for this uh, vertical edge behind. So first determine where it's originating, which is there, very close to this, and then uh, draw a horizontal line parallel to the horizon line. You can determine the simple points that have been already established. Since I already determined where it intersects, this is along X. So therefore, the line here needs to be casted. The line needs to go towards X. And that creates the shadow cast for this one. But here you can do this, you can do this, but except that here's a complex a complications here. You know? Now this thing, the shadow line for this one, this vertical, is going in inside this solid object. So the light source is light direction line is going inside the solid object. That gives me this information where, whereby it's going in. Okay. So now I can cast the shadow casting for this edge, starting from where it intersects with the. So I start it with this and it, it goes towards vanishing point Y. It hits the edge over here. And this should connect this. Uh, so this point and that point should connect. And then if it stops here over to the to this plane, vertical plane. And that determines now the shadow casting of for this because it, since it hits this plane, it now creates the shadow on this plane. But if you notice that 
you know, what went on as the shadow line and the light direction line going inside, it's this point. They intersect here inside. From this point, first point, to that point, and then when it hits here, on this edge, this corner edge, this plane, and that plane, this is how you determine that vertical shadow casting. So it's different. So this angle result is not the same as for this one. The shadow cast for this part is actually going to be here onto the surface, top surface of this first volume. So we still need to determine the shadow direction, which is this. And of course, the light direction from the top of here, parallel, it's somewhere there inside. Yeah. And that gives us context to where it's supposed, where it's supposed to go. I mean, where's the point of that? So the shadow edge for this one, at least initial part of this is this point is this point here, casted to this point, because that's how we determine. And this edge is towards vanishing point Y, and we follow the same edge. So it's partial. We determine those those things first. Now this one has a secondary secondary point for where, where it starts. Now we could say that you know it's the shadow vertical shadow edge. Uh, casting of this is actually this right? up to there same way here there's a secondary light direction and the result is this point now we can plot these two points on the lower casting of these vertical line shadows. And now we can determine the shadow casting of this edge underneath this cantilever onto here, onto the ground. By connecting these two points underneath here on this cantilever. So we need to cast that. So from here, I'm going to draw a line towards that vanishing point also, and it hits this. It hits the, the plane here under uh, on this ground. This plane is ex extended. Okay, so we have that line. That determines now that intersection here between from this point and line going towards there intersects here. Now you can illustrate from this intersection to the topmost of this line. To be like so. So it's not following the light direction line angle, but rather it's from this intersection. But this shadow line, this this uh, this edge's uh, shadow line extends beyond this shadow cast. The shadow casting of this orange line, or the hidden line, or the edge underneath this cantilever, is that you ter first determine where it touches that's this vertical plane, and this shadow casting was already determined before when it hits the ground edge and intersects here and you connect the two. So if you notice that the angle for, for, for of, of this, that, and here are practically the same. Of course, I have not yet place in the shadings for each of the plane but rather I just shaded where the shadows are casting on the ground and also 
onto the plane of this structure. 